sales manager here in the Midwest. I also have on the call today, my inside uh, counterpart, his name is Jonathan Rebus. And then I also have our solutions engineer uh, for Eagle Eye Networks for my territory. And his name is Mike Greinke. And with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Uh, make sure. Taylor, is my screen coming up okay? Yeah, we can see it. All right. <clears throat> so we, we are Eagle Eye Networks, and we are the largest cloud video management system in the world. And I'll show you a little bit about us here in, uh, as I go through this. So we were founded in 2012. If any of you have ever heard of uh, Barracuda Networks, Dean Draco, who founded us, founded Barracuda Networks back in the day, sold that for a pretty penny and started this company in 2012. He wanted a video system that honestly, he could check on employees and things around the Barracuda Networks building to see what was going on. So he founded us and in 2015, he actually bought Brevo. So he owns two companies now, Brevo and us. He does have some venture capital backing on top of that. We're headquartered in Austin, Texas. So we have offices now in Tokyo, Amsterdam and Columbia. You're gonna see on a slide here, we have 350 plus employees, but we're actually up to over, I think we're just over 600 now. But as I said, we're the number one cloud video surveillance system in the world now. We have industry leading cybersecurity. Dean coming from Barracuda Networks, there was two things that were of the utmost importance to him. One was we answer the phone. So if you call Eagle Eye Network support, somebody will pick up the phone 24 seven. The other thing we do is we make sure we're secure. And the way I say it is our cameras don't see the light of day once they're on our system. So I'll go through a little bit about what we do to, for encryption and things like that. But suffice it to say, in the 12 years we've been in business, we have never been breached. So here's some pictures <clears throat> of locations around the world. It says we have 11 data centers. We are actually uh, have 13 now. And as I mentioned, it'll say 350 employees were over 600, but I, as a, we're in 90 countries throughout the world and we're actually in discussions to add another data center in Saudi Arabia. So if any of you are global companies on this call and you wonder if Eagle Eye could support you around the globe, the answer is yes. With our data centers, um, we do not, we are not reliant then on AWS or Azure or anything else. So if there's ever any compression due to high usage or anything like that, we're not affected by that. And since we own our own data centers, we triple redundant everything in the cloud. So you never have to worry about uh, access to your video of any kind. And if you're a US customer, we do that triple redundancy right here in the US at three different uh, data centers. So some of the challenges we typically will hear about is remote access and management is limited. No, we have global real-time remote management and access, lack scalability, we're infinitely scalable. I mean, we have people with thousands of cameras deployed at their location. Maintenance and things, no, we, we're always pushing out the latest and greatest for our systems. So you always have that. Our video management system actually resides in the cloud so you're always getting the latest and greatest from us, whether you bought this three years ago or yesterday. And we have 24 seven uptime. As I mentioned, uh, cybersecurity, we are fully encrypted video, secure transmission, audits and pen testing. So we've done full penetration testing. And I would just say we've never been breached. Uh, limited video analytics and business intelligence with AI analytics to the cloud, flexibility to change instantly, without hardware deployment is our bread and butter. Like I say, we we come out, if somebody bought one of our devices, you know, and had four year old Bosch cameras or access cameras, and somebody else bought it today with brand new Bosch and access cameras, as far as the media, uh, video management system analytics and AI goes, they're exactly this, uh, they have the exact same muscle, uh, whether they bought their cameras four years ago or today. So it's uh, pretty slick. 
And then uh, fragmented systems lack access to government. We have central management with infinite combinations. You would work with IPS who in turn, if need be, could work with us to set up login and access rights to any member of your organization and what those might look like. You know, it says cloud demands excessive bandwidth. Quite honestly, when people talk bandwidth, they're talking download bandwidth. We're not concerned about download. We talk upload because that's all we need to do is upload video. And kind of as a rule of thumb is it's 0.5 megapixels per camera. So if you have 20 cameras, we're going to need 10 megapixels of upload. And that's it. I mean, IT generally really likes us because we don't impact the bandwidth. We don't impact the network. And our appliances can buffer the uh, video on the appliance so that if you have uh, you want us to release that video, let's say it after seven o'clock when there's even more megapixels available for upload, we can do that. We can buffer it on the appliance and then schedule it to be released up to the cloud uh, later on in the day. Cameras must be replaced. I've already touched on that. They don't need to be replaced. All the magic happens in uh, the cloud with us. It's only suitable for smaller cameras. As I mentioned, we have deployments of thousands of cameras. Uh, just offsite storage? No, we provide all the analytics, all the AI, everything you need, we give you in the cloud. And I won't beat this to get death on the cloud secure. We are unbelievably secure. Uh, I'm going to skip this slide. So NIST is the organization that defines measurements. And for instance, they're the organization that defines what a gallon of a gallon of gas is. And we are, to our knowledge, the only company that NIST has certified to be a true cloud uh, performer. I'm not gonna read all of this, but suffice it to say, we are the only organization that we are aware of that meets NIST standards for definition of cloud. A lot of people say they're cloud, but they're really just archiving a clip and putting that in the cloud, but everything is still done on the appliance. We are true cloud. So you always have access to it. So here's kind of what it'll look like. You have a couple cameras here. It'll go to uh, one of our appliances, which is either a bridge or a CMVR. And I'll pause here to tell you a little bit of difference here between the two. Our bridges can hook up to any cameras that's on VIF compliant. And we have over 6,000 integrations right now with cameras. And I kind of joke, uh, that no one eats their young like camera manufacturers. And so as they're coming out with new cameras all the time, if it's not one of the 6,000 we currently integrate with, it takes us under two weeks to integrate with a brand new model. Let's say Hanwa comes out with a new model tomorrow. It'll take us under two weeks to integrate with that new model of camera as long as it's on bit compliant. It goes to our bridge, which then uh, buffers and then can store in the cloud, true cloud, HD full resolution. We also have a CMVR. So some clients are a little hesitant to uh, store everything in the cloud for whatever reason, even though we triple redundant it and everything. But a CMVR will allow you to store it on the appliance, just like you would with an NVR back in the day, a DVR, and then also push one frame per second up to the cloud. So it gives you the best of both worlds and uh, Allows, so we offer two options there. Well, we actually offer three. And uh, the third is we do sell cameras. We're not a camera manufacturer. We don't, we're not trying to become one. We're agnostic, we work with any camera. But for those deployments that they don't have a camera, we also have cameras and they do have a small SD card in them. So they can store, I think up to maybe two days of video on the SD card. Um, and then, but we recommend if it's more than four cameras, you do use a bridge or a CMVR with our solution, even on our cameras. But the good news about our cameras is they're always compliant. They're always going to be integrated with our system, obviously. Goes through your data center. So it goes from your cameras to the bridge or CMVR, goes to the data center, which we own, and then it goes to your computer, phone, or tablet. Here's just what a multi-office location might look like. You got 
three different locations, different cameras. One has the CMVR and the other two have a bridge. Then go to our data center and again, out to your uh, phone, computer, or tablet. And we can integrate with access control, alarm monitoring, different things. We offer license plate recognition included. I'll show you that, uh, custom portals, et cetera. All right, we get out of this. Here's just a snapshot of some of the um, logos you'll rec recognize when it comes to cameras in our industry. Um, but again, if it's OnBIF compliant, you don't see it here. We're integrated with over 6,000 cameras. And if we're not, I'll, I'll show you where to look to see if it is up to date on the camera you're considering, but it takes under two weeks, usually four or five days. Um, so, you know, some of the things that AI and analytics can do uh, for end users is control access and traffic flow, pinpointing incidents and searching for people and objects. Um, you know, maybe it's a retail location and they want to know exactly when peak traffic is, when it's slower or whatever. Or maybe, you know, a, a customer is paying for uh, their parking lots to be plowed in the winter time, and they're not sure really the guy, we got a bill for five, uh, plows this month, but we're thinking he only did, was here four times. Those are the things people use at all time or slip and falls or, you know, a forklift accident or, you know, all kinds of things you can use, but obtain actionable vehicle insights with LPR. You can do that for, you know, maybe a disgruntled former employee or something, receive alerts when a camera is blocked, move. Currently in traditional NVRs, you know, if you're not looking at the screen in the bank of cameras or you're not physically walking around your building looking at the camera, see if it's offline, you don't know. And with us, we'll notify you if a camera's been vandalized or offline. Uh, protect your secluded areas, you know, block it out. If somebody crosses this line into this area, you'll be notified. Uh, patterns and behaviors of customers and employees and comply with ever changing regulations. Just a few thoughts. So with DVRs and NVRs, they require open ports, thereby, thereby exposing themselves to cyber threats. Hackers use this entry point to gain access to corporate networks. Even with firewalls, it's not that uncommon to hear about situations like this. I'm not smart enough to talk about Windows-based VMS vulnerabilities, but I have heard about them, that they are inherent to Windows and operating systems and easy for attackers to exploit. As I mentioned with Eagle Eye Cloud VMS, cameras are blocked from communicating with the internet. They're uh, block, we block cameras being attacked or compromised, and we block pre-installed Trojans from communicating with the internet. I can't say enough about our focus on cybersecurity. So here's a, a better visual more in 3D. Here's an OnVIF camera. Here's what one of our bridges could look like. We do make them rack size, We or you can buy a shelf to put them on the rack. They can be wall mounted, et cetera. They go to the data center, and then again to your computer screen, et cetera. As I mentioned, the dean who owns us also owns Brevo. So they are a sister company of ours. We're fully integrated. So if you are interested in cloud access control, IPS is also a Brevo dealer with cloud uh, access control, and they'd be certainly uh, willing to help you uh, figure that out. <coughs> and we integrate fully with them. And that's it. So I'll pause here for a moment as I'm pulling up the other thing. And, and Taylor, you can tell me if there's any questions as I'm pulling up uh, the, the, present, uh, the overview in more detail on our website. Okay, um, I did get one um, question that was texted to me, okay. and the person just wants to clarify, do they have to use an Eagle Eye NVR or can they use a different NVR? So it's in our bridge, it's, we don't have NVR. So we have, our, we have our bridge or we have our CMVR, which is a cloud managed video recorder. Gotcha. And so um, you would want, you need one of those two appliances either to work in conjunction with your current NVR or to replace your current NVR, because that's where all our muscle and magic mm -hmm. happens is with those appliances to get to the cloud to have access to our analytics and AI. 
Gotcha. So you can bring your own cameras, get a CMVR bridge set up from you, and the, the two together sets you up for success. Correct. Yeah, you don't have to rip and replace your current OnViv cameras. Um, so <clears throat> we can work with, again, over 6,000 brands, but you're, we can't put the magic in your current NVR. We have to have a bridge or CMVR. Okay, makes sense. And then we have a question in the chat. Um, can you expand work on the triple redundancy? Yeah, so we have 13 data centers around the world. And when we do triple redundancy off a bridge, we are storing that at three different data centers around the US in, in our particular case. So that way, you know, natural disaster of some kind hits, a tornado or something, we always have emergency backup of that video at other uh, data centers. Perfect. Before we move on, are there any other questions out there that someone wants to drop in the chat? You can also hop on your mic and ask. If not, we will move on. Okay, great. This is our website here. This is what I just pulled up. Excuse me. So if you ever want to look and get more detail on our product solutions, like a typical website, here's our cloud VMS, cloud uh, camera direct I talked about that you can uh, with a SD card video a everything here right here but I had mentioned supported device list and this is always updated I believe once a week um, for supported device list you can click on this and see what cameras but it's over 6,000 you have you know our solutions for industries and integrations resources it's a wealth of documents here you know this is more partners like IPS our support, and then about us at our company. But I'm going to go into our uh, login here and pull up our demonstration. So here's what it looks like. It's, you know, a typical video wall of camera feeds that you're probably used to with your cameras and NVRs or DVRs back in the day. But let me kind of just show you, uh, you know, kind of the muscle right out of the gate here. Um, I'm going to do kind of, or yeah, you know, do high traffic areas just to see what we can. Yeah, you know, it doesn't look. Let's go here. So I'm going to go here, go video search, and I'm just going to type in red shirt. I'm going to hit enter. Well, of course, this is going to happen. Try this again. Let me reload. Good news is we have access to a very easy demo site. The bad news is so does 600 other employees. So uh, let's just try change it. Let's see, dying right here. Let's just see if I. I have no idea why that is acting up like that. I may have to reboot this whole thing and I apologize to everyone. Let's try it one more time. Video search. Sorry, I was muted. I was saying it's okay. Like you said, there's a bunch of people on one demo unit showing off a great product, so. Yeah, here we go. All right, so guy in blue shirt. We're always gonna get wider instead of narrower when we do our searches. So you can see here, it's a, actually a woman in a blue shirt. We're always going to pull that up, and 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 that way we got a guy here in a blue shirt, another per, uh, person here in a blue shirt, and then you, you see these blocks along the bottom. Each one represents an hour of the day, so there's 24 hours right here. So let's say this is the camera view I want to search on, but this isn't the person I'm looking for. I could click click on this box. And say, oh no, that wasn't the person I'm looking for. Let me click on this box. Ah, that's not the person I'm looking for. And then, ah, there, there's the person I'm looking for. So just that quickly, in under about a half a second, I'm searching on people in blue shirts, which could have taken with a traditional NVR hours, maybe even days, to see that. 
Um, I can also Oh my gosh. I have no idea why this is done. This is really going slow today. Sorry, folks. I'm just moving this around. You don't have to do what I just did, but sometimes when everybody's using a demo site, it gets a little frozen here. Here we go. So I typed in white vehicle. You can see it pulled it up here. It, it just grabs all the cameras. You can't see it probably on your screen, but there's a white vehicle out that window. Things like that. So let's just say this is the camera view I wanted, but this isn't the camera or the car I was looking for. And click on that, say, oh, no, that wasn't the white vehicle I'm looking for. Here, that's the white vehicle I'm looking for. And it's just that quickly. That's really how we got started. That's what launched uh, Eagle Eye Networks is our video search. It is, besides today's uh, presentation, it is smoking fast and does an excellent job. Now, let me tell you uh, with, about license plate recognition. Um, with that, with license plate recognition, you know, with a lot of companies, the LPR cameras are quite expensive. The software to support them are quite expensive. We can use any camera that's on VIF one megapixel minimum and turn it into an LPR camera. We call it, call it our vehicle surveillance package. And this is right at our headquarters in Austin, Texas. But I would argue, these are all you can see right here, one megapixel views. I would argue this is as good as any LPR camera on the market and it's dimes on the dollar uh, cost wise. You get a great visual of the cameras right here. But what our system also does to the best of its ability is also pick up the make, as you can see here, and the color of the vehicle. That's pretty slick. So we go above and beyond what a lot of LPR cameras will do. And we uh, also add that little feature. And again, you can use your Hanwha, your Bosch, your Access, your Pelco, whatever you're using camera, and uh, we can make that into an LPR camera. Um, if you want to be alerted, like a certain vehicle comes in, you want to search on a particular vehicle um, or license plate, you can do that again, disgruntled employer, something you want to be alerted if they're pulling in, et cetera. So uh, I think, did I see something in the chat there? Taylor, I could pause for a second here. Yes, we uh, have a question in the chat and I also had one sent to me as well. Okay, so the question from the chat, is the demo a real representation of what the client uses? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Yeah, and then the question that was sent to me, so like you were going um, through and showing us, you know, white car. You typed in, you know, your smart search for white car, and then you had, you know, a series of cars pop up, and you could click through to, until you found the car you were looking for. Let's say you know the white car in question is, uh, I don't know, a Ford Mustang. Could you type in white Ford Mustang? Can you drill down that far, or can it only go white car and then you, the user, have to go through until you find what you find, find what you want. Let's give it a go here. The answer is yes, you can do this. Wait for okay. must. Like, can you get like down to make slash model? Basically, yeah. is the question. So that see. might be a very like rare car. It's just and I think maybe for I'm some reason the first thing that popped in my that. mind. Let me go back here to all cameras and your so so it's only coming up with this 
camera line here. Let's just see if something popped in here. No results. No results found. So let's try. Uh, Here, white Audi. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, nothing that I have. Nothing else in the chat. Does anyone have any questions before we move on? Okay, let's do it. All right. So a couple other things. If you have multiple locations or multiple floors, and you want to tag, you know, this is the cafeteria, this is the gym, or you have an office in Pittsburgh, you have one in, you know, Des Moines and one in uh, Phoenix, you can have it here. You can see we have like our Amsterdam office and our Austin and Australia offices, et cetera. You can tag it and, and put groups any way you want. I showed you our layouts. You can name the layouts any way you want, floor, area, building, et cetera. With our floor plans, we don't take native AutoCAD files, but if you can just convert it to a PDF, which everybody does nowadays, I'm sure you have this something similar with your current NVR. You can place your cameras, check your camera views, et cetera, just like you're probably current doing currently. Um, let me go back here. I want to show you guys this. Go back here. Let me pull up. Better cameras here. So let me just pull in here. So if I want to go here and I want to do, um, I want to check add analytics. Now these are, everything I've shown you to date is, uh, and we can do motion, people, and vehicle too, LPR, everything's included. These items here are all a la carte. And so let's say one of you on the phone are, like I say, maybe a, you want to count how many people come into this area a day for what have you. Maybe you want to track customers, you want to track employees, and you just want a segment of it for 60 days. You can turn this on for 60 days and I'll let IPS go over pricing, but it's minimal, minimal pricing. You turn it on for 60 days and then you turn it off, the billing stops. You want to do line crossing during a construction project or after hours and things. You can add that. You want to uh, have us hook up to a DMP, an intrusion detection. We can do that. Financial institutions like loitering, you can do that. And then again, tampering with the camera, you can do this. This is all a la carte items you can add um, to your devices. Um, in addition to that, we also, I want to talk about this. So. I was part of a, um, I'm a former security integrator, and I was part of the team that deployed uh, the command center at Nationwide Insurance. And they used to have to rotate their security guards, this is years ago, every hour looking at this wall of cameras uh, because of brain freeze. I mean, it's just humanly impossible to be effective. We have this called smart layouts. You can click on motion, person, or vehicle, and I'm going to click on person. Ah, good. I'm glad it worked. So you saw all the cameras uh, views migrate to the top. Those are the ones with people moving around in them. So if you're, you know, after hours have a security guard and you're wondering if he's on his phone or what have you, and it's, I hate to say it, it's almost human nature. Everywhere I've gone, you see that to some degree. This will prompt them because if they're doing something else and they see those cameras move, it'll automatically say, oh, wait, I got to I got to watch and pay attention here. We have something going on here um, in this area. So that smart layout, I think, is really cool. Um, trying to think. Mike or Jonathan, I have my two co-workers, as I mentioned on here, Mike or Jonathan, anything you two can think of I haven't shown that uh, might make sense? I think you hit some um, key points. I um, any of the analytics would be great as well. I think um, the ability to add certain analytics to certain cameras. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be throughout the whole system, but let's say you have an entrance and you want to 
add the motion analytic just to your entrances. Um, you can definitely do that per camera, and um, that's a good way to kind of showcase that as well. Thanks, Jonathan. Also, um, one more option that we have is if you have a event, an event like um, we had an example yesterday where um, somebody says, uh, we have a brand new forklift, and if the forklift driver makes a mistake, how can I copy or or restore that video from historic timeline and then um, deliver it to my compliance officer or what, um, however you want to do it? And I have a feeling he's going to show you the I'm example. I'm going to show why Mike's talking. So let's say this was the video clip I wanted. I could hit save here. I can archive this. And this would be all the archives I have choices from. And let's say I want to create a, a folder. Maybe I have different camera views of, uh, you know, this forklift incident or slip and fall incident or what have you. I can create a folder here, name the folder, and put every video clip I want in here and forward it internally or externally, uh, whatever you want. Mike, is that what you wanted to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. Because I saw the archive button down, you know, a couple couple tabs below, and um, just wanted to make sure that that was. It, it's pretty much a, it's a key point because if you do like um, you mentioned, Dave, if there's a slip and fall, or if you want to um, record somebody um, moving the couch in the middle frame here, that blue couch that's in the middle frame. Anyway, um, you can have it for future references and for others who might not have access to all this but they can see the video stream to say oh okay well i i understand and and this is for compliance and we have it all under compliance and maybe even if it needs to go to a first responder for historic um why um, either legal or the ambulance or or um, fire if they want to know what's going on within the building or unit itself so that's all my, that was my point there so thank you <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Taylor, any other questions have come up? Let me check my phone. I'll turn that off. Um, yes, OK, so we do have one. Um, with regard to the analytics, are special cameras required um, to be able to get that type of reporting? No, as long as it's ONVIP compliant, which is basically every camera on the market these days, uh, we can work with it. <clears throat> the To get some of the analytics, so we do require a minimum of one megapixel, which is pretty standard. Uh, mm -hmm. So no, uh, really the broad stroke answer is no, no special camera is needed. We can even work with old analog cameras um, if, if you have those in your building, we do need to add uh, some sort of encoder with that. Um, but depending on, you know, the age and what kind of analog camera it is. Okay, and then all of the stuff that you've showed us with regard to the smart search, is that the same type of experience, whether you have cloud versus C on-prem CMVR? Correct, if, yeah, if, if it's on-prem or in the cloud with our CMVR, it is the same search, correct? Same. Uh, awesome. Search. Yeah, that's a great question. I, they get a they get a gold star for that question. <laughs> and then I know you mentioned this earlier, and I just want to kind of reiterate it. So, Eagle Eye Networks and Brevo, which is at the access control side, they are sister companies. And for, I think we have some Brevo users on the call. And then for those of you that don't know, we are offering our line of managed security services from IPS. Access control, we use Brevo. Video, we use Eagle Eye Networks. Um, so I know, Dave, you said that Brevo integrates really well with Eagle Eye Networks and vice versa. Can you talk a little bit more about that integration? Are there added costs, added materials, anything like that to make that connection work? Well, uh, that's probably a better question for the Brevo rep. What happens is Brevo will ingest our video feeds into their system. Okay. It's not the other way around. Okay. So, 
So they would be better suited to add, answer detailed questions. But in essence, what they do is they'll, let's say you have a, a gate to let vehicles in and it's run by Brevo. We can trigger it with our license plate recognition, just by example, ingest that into their access control system, and then that'll raise the gate um, automatically. Gotcha. Awesome. Are there any other questions lingering out there? There seems to oh. be a question. Yes, we do have one in the chat. Was that what you were going to say? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is there a way to edit the video? Mike, I think I'll let you take that one. Alex. So there's two. I was reading the question and thinking in my head, how would I answer this? And I have a question to go back to this question is, are you edit, are you trying to edit the pre um, recording version or the post? So meaning you could edit the video on the pre side to say I want it to have um, this resolution. Um, I want it to zoom in here. I want it to uh, be able to recognize um, loitering or a specific line. So that way we're getting a, a proper count of people walking in and out. Uh, that's on the pre side, you know, the setup side. And then afterwards, once it's already videoed and recorded and, and um, and stored and housed, um, you can edit the timelines and then possibly, it depends on the camera, you could zoom in and zoom out to make it a clearer or larger um, image. So, but is there a yeah, specific? I think just to piggyback on what Mike is saying, here before you archive, like let's say this, this blue box, every one of these blue boxes represents a video clip of activity, motion, something. And let's say you don't want that full, whatever that represents, 15 minutes. You only want five minutes of that. That's what I think. Can we do that, Mike? Can we prune that box down before we archive it? You could prune it to the exact event that you're looking for. Okay. Like perfect. in this camera here, in this picture here, if somebody moved that couch and you found out who moved that couch, um, you can prune it down to that particular time frame of who the person was when they walked up and then when they left. Uh, hi, uh, my, na my name is Ali Najim. I asked a question, uh, work for Watchtower Security. Uh, actually, it was about the, after uh, the, the final product, basically. Let's say we have a, a person walks into the office through, let's say, camera one, goes into camera two, move the couch, go back through camera one. Is there a way to edit it where it shows all his movement chronologically through multiple cameras is what I was looking for. Uh, um. I'm going to take a stab, Mike, while you're thinking that. Fair so enough. what what you can do on each camera is when you come in here, you, when you you could save that clip. Let's say this is the, you know, this clip right here is this small clip, and this is it. I can save it here, archive it, put it in the folder, and then I can do the same with the other camera, put that in the folder, and then the third camera, put that in the folder, and then you got all three video clips in one folder calling uh, and naming the incident, whatever, uh, assault or something. Got it. I, Thank I, you. I, oh, did that answer it? Perfect. Okay, yes, sir. Great. Thank you. Oh, great. All right. Now, and if you have a good video editor um, tool, you can marry all three into one, um, but it would have to be a, a third party uh, um video editor that you would have on, on your computer. Awesome. Are there any other questions out there from anyone? All right. Well, if there are no other questions, then I suppose we can end wrap up a little early here. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, I will be following up via email with some additional information, a link to the recording so you can look back, um, refer to anything that we discussed today, or if you need to send it to a colleague, that's also fine too. And then if anyone would like a one-on-one -on -one demo where we drill down maybe a little bit more, answer some specific questions, um, 
relative to your situation at your business, we can totally set that up. You just let me know or let your IPS rep know and we will connect with Dave and get something on the schedule. So with that, I just want to thank everyone for their time today and have a good rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, Taylor, for putting this together. We really yes. appreciate it. Thank you for joining us and yeah. great presentation, Dave. Thanks, well, thank everyone. You.